Welcome back to The Daily Grind, everyone. So a little under a month ago, we had a major freeze come through and it damaged a lot of this lettuce that was here. I've got two varieties here. I've got the outrageous, kind of play on words, outrageous, but it's it's a red lettuce, so outrageous. <laughs> <laughs> and then right here, I've got the Merrillville. And both of these are pretty cold tolerant, but they did get hit pretty hard with, I think we got down to 16 degrees. And the ones in the center here, because I had this covered, the ones on the edges died back because of the cold, but the ones in the center made it. So I'm gonna replant a couple of them today. I've got some seedlings that I can put in here to replace some of the ones that died back. And I'm not gonna do the outrageous actually, because I don't have the seedlings for that, but I do have another red variety called Merlot, which actually I've got over here, and I kind of like better. You can see it there. So the outrageous has really kind of frilly leaves, and the leaves are almost shaped like arugula. It's very kind of, you know, it, it, it's good, um, but I, I like a rounder leaf better, personal preference. Um, it's a little softer. It's um, I, I like the flavor of this one better. Excuse the train in the background. So I'm gonna plant that in replacement for another red lettuce right next to this outrageous, okay? So it'll be the Merlot variety. And let's get to it. Let's go ahead and plant. So here are my seedling trays. That's the Merlot, and this is the Merville. I like these both. Um, this is Merville. Those even got damaged in the frost, so I'm not sure they'll even make a comeback, but we'll just replace a whole bunch of them here. Now, I do have these really close together, a lot closer than the seed packet says. That's because I harvest these as leaf lettuce. I do the cut and come again method, so I'll come through and pick a couple leaves, take them in for salad, and thin these out pretty regularly and then they just don't encroach on each other. Right now they are a little bit because I didn't want to stress them after that frost. I and mean, that was almost a month ago, a little bit, little bit less. You know, it's, it's about that time. I wanted to make sure that they had some time to really kind of catch their breath and um, come back. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove all the dead. This one might live, but it's just, it's not doing well. It'll be better to just replace it. So we'll pull that one out, pull this one out. Same thing here. I mean, that one just came right out the, it's not even connected to the roots. Again, they died back. That one's not super healthy. I'm gonna pull that one out. And in fact, even though this one might make it, I'm gonna get a different variety in and we'll just keep it uniform here. So all the edges will be that other variety. And pull that one out. Any of these that died. All right. Now, next thing I'm gonna do is kind of break up the soil here, pull this drip line, make sure it's sitting up a little higher. There we go. And this one looks pretty bad, so let's get that one up. Now, I will say, I don't plan on keeping these in for too much longer. This bed is gonna end up being harvested once I harvest this onion which is probably gonna be in about two, maybe three months. So I actually ran out of the regular organic fertilizer. Um, I've got these amendments that I usually add with that organic fertilizer. This blood meal, which is straight nitrogen, and then bone meal, which is straight phosphorus. And both of these are really good. I don't have anything that has the potassium, but I do have wood ash. So I'm gonna grab that in a minute, um, and then we can basically kind of make our own here. All right, so this came from my barbecue pit. I don't put any chemicals in. I don't do anything that can hurt the plants. It's just straight wood ash, which is really what pot ash, potassium, came from. We'll put that in. We'll be covering it as well. Put it in a trench where I'm gonna end up placing these. So we'll get some good potassium in there. Next, let's get the We'll do the blood meal. This is really important. The nitrogen is really important for the leafy growth. And then bone meal is really good for root development. This is the phosphorus. And of course, that's really important when they're young. You wanna really encourage that root growth. And then, like always, any kind of the natural fertilizers, you really gotta scratch this right into the soil. So that way the soil biome can do its thing and start breaking that down. 
Let's go ahead and start planting. So I've got six of these to start with the Merlot. In fact, a couple of these are multiple plants in one. So we'll have to pinch off which ones are not the healthiest. We'll keep that one. one looks good. Let's get this right in close. Again, I'm gonna be harvesting it before it encroaches on anything else. We've got some really good root development here already. It looks like this one is a little bit bigger. Pinch that off. You can see how close I plant these together. With that in mind, um, you don't have to do as far as a packet does if you're gonna be harvesting regularly. You just gotta keep up with it. Three on that side, we'll get three on this side now. So all these extras are gonna go to my chickens. Let's get on to this Merrillville. So I've got less space on this side than that, so I'll do two on this side, the four on that side. And these only have one in there because I had trimmed these ones back. I didn't trim the others back. I got a little lazy and forgot to. And there we go. Got all that planted. Now it's time to water this in. But first, let's go ahead and give these extra seedlings to my chickens. They'll eat them. You could eat them too if uh, you wanted. Baby greens are always really good. So it's very important you water in when you first plant because it does a couple things, especially if you're using the organic fertilizer, that's gonna start that breakdown process right away. And second off, you know, those, those plants are in shock right now. So that's gonna start getting those roots to be able to wanna grow down deep. You want a really heavy watering because then the once it dries on top, those roots are gonna start seeking for water and you wanna make sure that water is really deep. They've all laid over a little bit. So you can come through and kind of stand them up after you water them, that happens. And then once they get stronger, they'll just stand up on their own. Now, I've got some room here that I could actually plant some stuff. And there is also that Merlot lettuce. That's not the Alregia. So you can see here, you got some ruffles, but it's not like these. See the leaf on those, it's almost like a oak leaf. So I can get a little bit more here, which I'm gonna do in just a little bit. I gotta find what lettuce I'm gonna put there. Let's scratch up the surface a little bit. Kind of dried. I ended up using a lot of peat moss in this bed to kind of add some fluffiness, but once that dries a little bit, it gets a little, a little funky. Let's, while we're here, we'll add this bone meal, because I know I'm gonna plant. and the blood meal. Let's go figure out what else we're gonna plant right there. All right guys, so I got this parsley. It says eight inch. And I mean, yes, you're, I'm gonna be using the cut and come again method with it, but not as often as I do with lettuce. I just don't use parsley as often. There's also quite a few starts in here and these are small, so it's hard to see and get in. So not with my fingers. So I'm gonna have to do it with some scissors here. All right, we left just the healthiest one there. And of course, We'll give the parsley babies to the chickens. So let's get these two planted. I'm not gonna plant a lot. I might do three, but eight inches. So yeah, that'll leave barely enough. So we'll just, we'll do a little bit more. We'll, a little further away. And we'll just get two in here. And that was another row that had died in the winter. I had just planted those, those were brand new. Luckily all the spinach seemed to have lived and the arugula, not the lettuce, that kind of died back. It just was a little too cold for it. All right, water it in. These should start taking off in about two weeks and I'll start being able to harvest them in about two weeks, the brand new ones here. Anyway, thanks for watching everyone. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe and hit that bell notification for future video updates. Also, if you could hit the like button, it would really help me and the channel out and I will see you on the next video. Now you guys try to escape the daily grind.